Big C Catholic Christians affirm that the Holy Spirit guides the church in her teaching without coercion. What confuses us, at least historically, is the exact mechanics of how we came to this truth of the perpetual virginity of Mary. We do know that this idea was actively resisted by some, such as Tertullian, who was frightened that the church was yielding ground to the Docetists and the Gnostics, both of whom denied the humanity of Christ or distorted the humanity of Christ and claimed that the body was evil along with its sexuality. However, the Jesus groups at that time that were proto-Orthodox fostered the glorification of ascetical practices and sought in Mary, the emerging symbol of the church, a great ideal, a great sign of this ideal, which allowed an interpretation of the birth of Jesus in terms of her inviolate virginity, and thus introduced a new danger of docetic trends. It started turning the birth of Jesus into an alien to the human condition event. Docetic. And that very danger explains, again, Tertullian's resistance to the doctrines or notions of virginitas in partu, in the act of giving birth, and virginitas postpartum, her continued uninterrupted virginity physical virginity after the birth. And then we got this. The brothers and sisters of Jesus. From the 4th century onward, the church unanimously taught that the perpetual virginity of Mary before antipartum, during, huh? In partu, and after postpartum, Jesus' birth. The church from the 4th century on the Jesus groups, affirm that. So by that time, we know that when they call Mary virgin and semper virgin, right, all the ever virgin, they mean what? Physical virgin. Okay. Again, the New Testament is silent about Mary's virginity in part two, in the act of giving birth, and whether she was a virgin postpartum, after the fact. In fact, it speaks about brothers and sisters of Jesus. In the Reformation, as we're going to see later on, Protestant churches from the 16th century maintained belief in the virginal conception of Jesus, but rejected the perpetual virginity of Mary based on contrary evidence from Scripture. Not Luther, by the way, or Calvin, and I believe Zwingli, all held the perpetual virginity of Mary. But their followers did not. All of them. Most of them eventually rejected that notion as extra-biblical. They affirmed that the Catholic belief on Mary's virginity after Jesus' birth was contradicted by biblical passages, gospel passages, and New Testament passages about the brothers and sisters of the Lord, mentioned in the Gospels elsewhere in the New Testament. Now, not every Protestant did this. Figures like John Wesley believed in the perpetual virginity of Mary. Mark chapter 3, right? We've read this before. And his mother and his brothers came. Your mother and your brothers are outside. Who are my mother and my brothers? Is not this the carpenter? Should be. Is not this the village artisan? The son of Mary? And brothers of, ja brothers of James and Joseph and Ju Ju Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? Wow, we got names of the brothers. John, after this, Jesus went down to Capernaum and his mother and his brothers and his disciples. Notice, you can't say, oh, the brothers are the disciples, like Peter. No, they're not. The brothers are one group. And they're paired up with Mary there. Chapter 7. So his brother said to him, Leave here and go to Judea, that your disciples may see the works you're doing. For no man works in secret if he seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe him. That means they're mocking him. And then Jesus talks to them. And Galatians chapter 1, verse 19. Now this is Paul writing in the 50s. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. 
1 Corinthians 9, verse 5, Paul writes, Do we not have the right to be accompanied by a wife? As the other apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Kephas. Notice he puts Peter, Kephas. You can't, well, he means brothers is kind of a catchphrase for all of the people who follow Jesus in the Jesus movement. No, not, not, not brothers, Adelphoi. They're different than the disciples. They're different than Peter. And he calls James one of them. And so do the Gospels. So, well, how do we deal with these Catholics? Are we in trouble? Has we got we got messed up? How do you explain that? Yes, Richard. Are they stepbrothers? Interesting. How would most Catholics think of them? What would they call them? Cousins. 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 Why? Because of Saint. Because yeah, go ahead. Not only would you say cousin or brother was the same word that they used. And blessed mother, since he was. I like how you said she's perfect, so that means she couldn't have sexual relations. She was created in a special way. She walked without sin. And, and sex is sin, right? No sin in her soul. She didn't inherit. So of course she wouldn't have so so she would so she would so of course that means that she wouldn't have ordinary sexual relations. No. You don't mean that. No. All right, I agree with you. We're gonna no. by the way by the way Rose we're gonna talk about I promise you in the next few times we're gonna I, I I agree that she was without sin. We're gonna talk about that when we get to the in the fall when we talk about the immaculate conception. But the immaculate conception is one thing. Perpetual virginity is another thing. Many Catholics and other Christians can't distinguish the two. They, in their mind, they think immaculate conception and perpetual and, 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 and her virginal conception of Jesus are the same thing. You know why? Because we think of immaculate as clean and sex is dirty. No. Not you, but many people do. So now I want you to get there. I'm glad you don't. I'm glad you don't. So hear me out on this. You hear? I want you to see this. Because this is where the problems come in. Is it because she can't sin, therefore she can't have sexual relations and even enjoy sex? Okay, I, I, I don't want you to answer. I just want you to watch your emotional reaction to what I said. Does having no sin mean you have no sexual identity, you cannot enjoy the feeling of sex? Because sex is bad, right? So if you if you had no sin, you have no bad, and therefore you can't enjoy um, the feelings, the human feelings that have that are accompanying sexual, being a sexual being. Docetic, docetic, docetic. I didn't say that I disbelieve that Mary was a perpetual virgin, perpetually a virgin. I asked you, could one be without sin and enjoy human relations in a conjugal or sexual way? If you have a problem with this, you see in your mind, there's the real issue. You have been taught and brainwashed that sex is dirty. And we got a problem. And it comes from the second century.